The story of Cedar Grove and the Brethren in Christ Church denomination can't be told without addressing the changes that took place during the mid-20th century. The following section draws liberally from Carl Whittinger's quest for piety and beads, the story of the Brethren in Christ, in an attempt to explain the transition that took place. One of the tenets of the early BIC was the concept of not being conformed to the world. As social and technological change accelerated as the 1900s began, some parts of what they felt were essential seemed to be under siege from without. Consider some of the changes that took place. Horses replaced by cars and tractors, airplanes flying overhead, radio, movies, television, women gaining the right to vote, and new weapons that made warfare more terrible and brought death to innocent non-combatants. Photography, motion pictures, musical instruments, and the shift from farming into business and industry were among the points of contention and stress. The church accepted some technology, cars and radios, and social changes like insurance and social security, but struggled with the societal, societal evolution around it. The action took, a, took the form of a push for legislation about dress. The 1937 General Conference instituted a dress code that included the suits of plain material for men, and plain modest dress with a cape for women, and bands on ties and jewelry. And then the traditional band of musical instruments and services also remained. As the post-World War II era began, some BIC denominational leaders confronted the fact that there were problems in the church. Uh, although about 13, over 13,000 people were attending Sunday school, only there were only 5,800 church members. During the 1950 National Association of Evangelicals Convention in Indianapolis, a group, a group of BIC leaders held an informal meeting in a hotel room. They identified two areas of great concern, the need to change the unpaid minister system, the one where pastors were compensated, and to change church regulations and the legalistic mindset that were making it difficult to integrate new converts into the church and were driving away many youth. This is a picture of Henry Ginder, one of the men who was in that hotel room. They pushed for alterations in the Brother in Christ Church. Over the next decade, changes were slowly made. In 1957, the number of bishops was reduced from 25 local bishops to six overseeing conferences that were the forerunner of today's structure. Bishops began receiving salaries. In turn, the bishops urged congregations with multiple lay unpaid preachers filling the pulpits to change to a single paid minister to lead their congregations. Dress was relaxed and left to the individual member's conscience. Musical instruments again was left up as a, to a local congress congregation. As I mentioned earlier, Cedar Grove had a rotating system from its start. In February 1952, the Cedar Grove Congregation well, Council selected Wilbur Benner, the youngest of the unpaid ministers, to be the sole partially supported pastor. In his memoir, he told of an incident that showed the flaws of the rotating speaker system. He was scheduled to speak upon Sunday, and his, most, many of his family visited to, to hear him. One of the other ministers, he doesn't give a name, pulled rank and took over the pulpit when he saw the large crowd, the bishop heard what was happening and was not pleased. They had together problems like that, the fact that people could turn on their radios and hear professional evangelists like Billy Graham, and it's easy to see why the old system died out across the denomination. Reverend Benner was only 23 when he was named the, the church pastor. One of the outreach ideas he introduced was a radio broadcast over at Lewistown Station. Radio Pastor Benner was called to Kentucky in 1955. When he retired in 2000, 
2000. We held, had held a dozen pastorates in Florida, Ontario, Kentucky, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. He also preached in over 200 revivals and camp meetings across the U.S. and Canada. He passed away in 2020. One of the keys to Cedar Grove's success was the succession of pastors with clear vision of the future and how to get there. Paul Hess and his wife Esther served at Cedar Grove from 1958 to 1962. Reverend Hess was the first pastor with a college degree, a fact that apparently caused some tension with the, some of the congregation. He also modernized the administrative structure of the church congregation uh, that resulted in a single church board instead of multiple bodies and reached out to the communities. The next pastor, Eugene Hyder, credited Reverend Hess with laying the foundation for his success and the growth that followed. Uh, the tensions of the, within the congregation during the changes that took place were not unique to Cedar Grove, but also took place in many, if not most, BIC churches. A parsonage was built for about $13,000 to ask how Pastor Hess and his family. In addition to its ha his housing, Reverend Hess received a salary of $1,600 a year, or only about $15,000 in today's money. The pastor partially was used until Pastor Allison arrived in 88 and expressed a desire to own a home of his own, and then it was sold. Pastor Hess and his family left Cedar Grove in May 1962. During the search for a replacement, Harvey and Ruth Lauber served as interim pastoral couple. Harvey was born in 1896 and was converted and joined the church in 1915. Harvey and Ruth farmed a Lauber farm above Van Wert from 1920 until they retired in 1960. There's a picture of Har Harvey's handwritten testimony. Uh, Harvey had been elected and ordained as one of the alternating pastors in 1939, and he'd also served as a mission pastor in Curry County. In retrospect, uh, he can be see viewed as the final link to the unpaid pastoral system at Cedar Grove. There's a picture of his obituary and of Ruth Lauber, his widow, in later years. The church's new 27-year-old pastor, Eugene Hyder, arrived in July 1963. He had been youth director in a Philadelphia church and worked in construction while attending Mosiah College. He would lead Cedar Grove for the next 24 years of change. Uh, I remember him recounting how sometime before he came to Cedar Grove, he had a dream or vision about the next church he would pastor. In the vision, he saw a small, bald-headed man in the audience. When he arrived, he recognized the man as being David Zook, Donna, Donna's father, as the man he had seen. Reverend Hyder reached out to the community and began a weekly radio program. His interest in music helped change worship styles. In 1968, an organ was used in the sanctuary, the first instrument to be owned by the church. Donna Zook was the first organist and continued playing almost to the time of her death. Pastor Gene, his wife Dee, and Donna formed a gospel trio known as the Evangels and recorded three albums. Pastor Hyder also began printing bulletins for the Sunday morning worshipers. Many people from outside the church began attending, and the church's makeup also changed as more professionals and business persons joined the traditional farmers and laborers. After working at Juniata Roller Mills in Thompson Town and serving as a substitute mail carrier for eight years, Pastor G became our full, first full-time paid minister. Many outside Cedar Grove recognized his abilities. 
At the time of the 1967 76 enlargement, a newspaper article listed 14 organizations, agencies, and boards that he was involved in, in addition to his pastoral duties. The growth that followed the addition increased the workload for Pastor Heidler. The need for additional staff was apparent. Ken Hepner was a young man with a remarkable conversion story. Although his family attended church when he was a small boy, they stopped when he was five. At the age of 18, I joined the Navy in the service. The center has two basic avenues to take, and I chose to get involved with drugs, he wrote in his 1978 testimony. There were plenty of opportunities for me to get hooked on the needle, but there seemed to be a power inside of me that would allow me to start the habit. I honestly believe God had to have his hand on my life back there, or I would not be here today. He returned to Juniata County, married Randy Geyer, and began spending time with his grandmother and his uncle. Their witness helped bring him to a moment of decision. One day, in my loader in the limestone quarry, I threw away all my tobacco and told God, here I am, Lord, if you can do anything with me, can you do it? Thomas Zook invited Ken to sing at a revival at Cedar Grove, and then Randy began attending. He felt God calling him to preach, and Pastor Hyde and others within the congregation also sensed that call. Uh, during 1979, Ken was appointed as associate pastor and began a program of Bible study and events that brought new spiritual life to the young people of Cedar Grove. He left to become a senior pastor at Mechanicsburg in 1985, but his part in Cedar Grove's story was not finished. Uh, on Sunday, October 26, 1980, we held our 50th anniversary celebration. Glenn Stoner gave a historical sketch and there was a fellowship meal. Donna Zook wrote an article that made some interesting comparisons between 1930 and 1980 that you can see there on the screen. There were some of the original, some of those who attended the, uh, were present at the 1930 uh, uh, original 1930 dedication. Even some of them were quite young then. Uh, In 1987, after almost a quarter century of service, Pastor Hyder left Cedar Grove. The church had grown and prospered during his tenure. One statistic that illustrates that growth is that church membership increased over 150% in the decade from the big step forward in 1976 until 1986. During that time, the church financed a Holy Land tour for the Hyders in 1980 and granted him an 18th an eight and a half month sabbatical in 1984. He and Dee were honored and presented with a grandfather clock and a money tree at his farewell. He would serve as an interim and full-time pastor at several other churches before retiring in 2010. He also drove the giant cow that was the mascot for Turkey Hill ice cream. When Pastor Hyder passed away in 2019, Pastor Ken Hepner included a tribute in the next church's communicator newsletter. He said, many of us, in part, he said, many of us are in the kingdom of God today because we serve the Lord Jesus under Pastor Hyder's direction as our pastor. I, for one, want us to remember well the legacy of a man who was powerfully used by the Holy Spirit in the history of the church body we have come to love. Pastor Dale Allison and his wife Pauline arrived at the church in September 1988. Pastor Allison had been involved in a church plant in Calgary, Alberta, for the BIC, led a congregation of over 300 people in Elizabethtown, and had been in the General Conference Board for Evangelism and Church Planning. And he had also been an evangelist here during a series of meetings in 1970. He, there he is with his wife Pauline and her mother. Uh, 
he began implementing new ideas like the grade ministry that involved a prayer ministry, fellowship and caring, one-on-one -on -one discipleship, and evangelism and outreach. He also introduced the concept of tests to discover one's personal gifts, and many who attended then still recall his exhortation to follow our holy hunches. Sadly, just as his many of his ideas were coming to fruition, Pastor Dale became ill and was forced to stop preaching on June 10, 1990. He gave a final message called Think the Bank in October and also led a couple of prayer meetings later in that month. He asked to be relieved of his duties on December 31, 1990. He was moved to Messiah Village as his illness worsened and he passed away on April 6, 1999, 1991. John Schock served ably as an assistant and interim pastor for 11 months during his illness and death and the search for his replacement. There is a, his obituary. Pastor Ken Lettner began serving at Cedar Grove on September 1, 1991. He had been director of the Board of Congregational Life at Mount Joy, PA for nine years before coming here. He continually brought new innovations and challenges to the congregation. The computer age arrived during his service at Cedar Grove, and he made sure the church was not left behind. During 1996, he preached a series of sermons on topics and areas submitted by the congregation. And in 1997, we began holding two, two services. And in September 2001, the format of the first service became more traditional, and the second more contemporary, a practice that continued until it was discontinued in the fall of, until it was discontinued in the beginning of 2024. see some of the things that happened during his ministry. Uh, during that time, we started the education wing, or built the education wing in 1993, and in 2002, Life Center groundbreaking took place. Uh, Craig Zent was his associate and youth pastor from 1992 to 2003. And, and Several women were also joined the staff. Deb Richmond and now Deb uh, served as director of Christian Life, and Charlotte Little also served as director of children's ministry, and Deb Bench became pastor of adult ministries. Uh, he also, during his his time, uh, we had had a program that Sunday evening program during the summer months called FRED, Fellowship, Recreation, Eats, and Devotional. The idea was to combine a picnic with a time of devotions in an informal outdoor setting. It was initially quite successful and lasted for about a, a decade. There's a couple pictures from, you can see Pastor Ken there with a plate of food at one of the uh, Sunday evening uh, picnics. There, there was a group of youth uh, talking about one of their uh, trips. Uh, Pastor Ken Lettner's organizational skills did not go unnoticed. He received a call to become bishop of the Susquehanna Conference of the Brethren of Christ Church and accepted the position and was installed on July 3rd, 2002. On September 29th, he pre preached a farewell sermon at Cedar Grove titled, My Passion, My Heart. That evening there was a, a catered meal and gifts for Pastor Ken and his light wife, Linda. Uh, an article in the, in the local paper 
listed some of his accomplishments during his tenure at Cedar Grove. He preached approximately 440 sermons, dedicated 100 children, preached 38 funerals, and officiated at 30 weddings. During that time, there were, there were 170 baptisms, and we received 183 members into the church. Uh, Pastor Lettner continued to reside in Juniata County while serving as bishop. During a vacation in January of 2008, he experienced physical symptoms that made it necessary to cut his trip short and consult a neurosurgeon. The doctor found he had a brain tumor. Surgery revealed that it was cancerous. Um, on March 11th, Pastor Ken sent out a moving letter about his illness. Here on the screen are some excerpts from that letter. Treatment was... A, Ultimately unsuccessful. He died on September 4, 2008. Um, during the search for a new pastor, the church search committee picked Don Schaefer, a former pastor, bishop, general secretary, and moderator of the Brethren in Christ Church, to be the interim pastor. Because he resided in California, Bishop Don and his wife Marlene were only present. 59 days in the next nine months. Other members of the fast staff filled in while they were present. Pastor Steve Munger and his wife Linda began their service at Cedar Grove on June 29, 2003 and served until May 2011. Pastor Steve had pastored in the Nazarene and Free Methodist denomination before joining the Brethren in Christ. He had served the Antrim um, BIC Church for seven years and then been the BIC Associate Director for International Ministries and was an experienced airplane pilot. The church, during his time, the church opened its facilities to an Hispanic church plant, plant that continues to, on, to this day, although its members have fluctuated. Another thing we, we had that we inaugurated was Friend Day in 2004. Every fifth Sunday there was a combined contemporary service with an evangelistic emphasis. Tractor Day was another interesting innovation and in outreach that we had during Pastor Steve's time here. Those who owned tractors drove them to church, and there was a picnic following the service. Uh, there was a picture of my mother riding in the, uh, the uh, one of the, one of the tractors. She got in trouble for that stunt, but it, I don't think she was too much bothered about it. A rather funny memory for me. There's Pastor Steve and Linda at one of our picnics. Cedar Grove reached another milestone during Pastor Munger's tenure. During 2005, the committee planned a weekend celebration to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the dedication of Cedar Grove. On, on Saturday, October 15th, at 5 p.m., we had an old-fashioned love feast in Fellowship Hall. The menu included beets, homemade pickles, beef and noodles, peaches, cookies, coffee, homemade bread, and apple butter to replicate the original celebrations of the Love Love Feast. The program included music from various groups from the 1950s and, and 80s. Several persons from the congregation's past, including former student pastor Curtis Byers, John Kiefer, the son, grandson of Greeley and Jenny Gingrich, who had donated the land for the church, Pauline Allison and Ken Hepner had parts in the evening. It was foot washing and communion following the meal. There's a newspaper article that was published to her at the time of the celebration. You can see the picture up there of the original church building. Uh, there's a bolt in front of the love feast. Sunday morning, Sunday school featured the men on the right side and the women on the left, duplicating the practices, 
practice in the 1930 church. There you can see uh, some now some of the people sitting Dave Huntsberger leading a, a group of, of a cappella singers. Uh, there Glenn Mary Stoner uh, re returned from Messiah Village to lead lead the uh, congregation in, in Saul. For the, 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 the 45 minute time of fellowship, the morning ser service featured messages from former pastor Eugene Heidler and Bishop Ken Latman. There was a, readings of Ella Lawler's letter, Letters to the Visitor by Donna Zook, and music by the Gospel Gems and a female trio and quartet. Uh, there were six pe persons who were part of Cedar Grove in 1930 who attended. Uh, that day, Viola Walver, Glenn, Anna, and Mary Beth's brother Jess Stoner, uh, Sarah, Sarah Stoner Oldham, John Dienrich, and Esther Lawver Davis, uh, and Jane Book Benner. Now all of those people have passed on. Pastor, Pastor Ken and Raina Hepner returned to Cedar Grove in 2012. Since they arrived, the church has gone through a time of spiritual growth. Hepners have taken congregational members on missions trips to Africa and India. Pastor, at present, Pastor Gary Payton is leading the youth ministries and assisting Pastor Ken. And Amber Suplee is heading the children's ministry. Al Reem is member director of Congregational Life, and Raina Eckner oversees senior adult ministries. There's a picture at the, at the time of Pastor Ken's installation of him with his mentor, Pastor Heidler. By then, Pastor Gene was almost blind, a sort of poignant picture. You can see a, a little outline of some of the things that happen, have happened since the, the uh, Pastor Ken's arrival, re return to Cedar Grove. Another thing that the, the 1920-21 COVID epidemic, the times we had this, how our services were streamed and brought on the, the online streaming of services. Uh, another interesting bit of progress that our first members could hardly have be imagined that our services would go out to the entire world over the internet. Um, Pastor Ken and Raina. And there's our uh, present staff. Let's see. Except for This picture was put in as a bit of a joke to show Al Reem as, um, as he was many, many years ago, back in the 1970s. And he's just sticking that in there. There were many local families whose service was instrumental in the growth of Cedar Grove. Names like Book, Gingrich, Peachy, Zook, Wirt, Varner, Oberlin, and Stoner often appear in the records and the scrapbooks in our history center. One story is an example of those who served. Glenn and Mary Stoner were exemplar, exemplars of selflessness. Their story shows the dedication that propelled the church's growth through all the changes. Glenn and Mary served for a deacon couple for over 31 years. During that time, Glenn only missed one service, missed only one church board meeting. Deacons were automatically became members of the board in those days. When they stepped down, he was given the title of Deacon Emeritus. After his re retirement as deacon, he also then served as minister of visitation. And he was one of the few persons who si participated in the building of the 1930 church, the 1964 edition, and the 
new sanctuary and expansion in 1976. Uh, both Glenn and Mary led many, uh, wore many other hats. Uh, Mary led congregational singing for 25 plus years and then continued as Messiah Village church song leader after, she, after they uh, retired there. There's a couple pictures of Mary with an avid quilter. You can see there a couple of pictures of her quilting and a picture that I took at one of their anniversary uh, celebrations. Uh, on May 4th, 1997, a special Sunday evening farewell service was held in honor of Anna Stoner. Anna was Glenn's sister, and also the sister of Mary Beth Stoner. The occasion was her departure from Isaiah Village. She had been a member of Cedar Grove for over 70 years. There's Mary Beth, her sister, who has, has quite a story of her own. We don't have time to tell it here. Mary, or Anna had been a member of Cedar Grove for over 70 years, Sunday school teacher, a kitchen and nursery worker. She had participated in sewing circles, corresponded with missionaries, folded and stuffed bulletins, and helped keep the cradle roll records. Anna was a short person who stood less than five feet tall. I remember Pastor Ken Lettner telling how uh, when he first came to Cedar Grove, he was startled to see an apparently driverless car pull up to the church. The phenomenon was explained when Anna stepped out. Above all, above all, Donna was a noted prayer warrior and a person who reached out to those hurting or in need, sometimes with a phone call or with a visit bearing cookies or pie. There's a picture of her at the Zion Village with my mother. And that completes our session for today.